Welcome to Kathy Millet Modeling. I've been wanting to do a speedboat wake and ocean foil waves for absolutely ages. All good dioramas start with a plan. Mine's a print, it's just a printout with a photo from the internet and a 3D printed boat from Thingiverse. It's a Chris Craft boat and I used it to work out the size and spacing. Then I got my supplies, glue, foil and a picture frame. I removed the metal bits from the base of the picture frame, which is gonna be the bottom of my diorama. I also took the perspex out. Then I masked the edges using just normal household painter's tape. This is to keep them looking nice and shiny. Now I'm modeling these waves on the ocean. And to make them, I start with scrunched up foil. I actually got a lot of this method from Scalaton on YouTube, so check him out. And I've been looking at doing foil waves for a while and I wasn't entirely sure and his videos have been incredibly helpful. So once I'd worked out how my foil was going to sit, I used white glue to glue it down. And this is just normal PVA white glue applied with a foam disposable brush. And I washed that out and reuse it, so it's not really even that disposable. I put down the foil, and these each of these pieces of foil is a wave. So I put them down in ripples going across my base. Now you do need to have some photos and you need to understand how waves work. Now at this point I didn't put in the flat area for the wake and I was able to do that afterwards thankfully because this foil is not scrunched particularly firmly and you can still push it around later on in the process. So I just built it up until I got to the end. Now to hold it down a little I got the perspex that I'd taken out of the frame and I just weighted it and put it on top and left it overnight to dry. The next morning I came back and I covered a piece of foil big enough to go over this base with a layer of white glue just to hold it down. I'm a belt and braces girl so I added a bit of extra white glue around the edge of the scrunch foil as well and then I put it on top and pushed it into the wave pattern. Now you need to do this quite gently or you'll break the foil which I did. Not to worry, you can just put some more white glue on and put on another layer of foil. In fact, I actually did this with three layers of foil in the end. I left the edges a little bit wider. I can come back later and trim those. And I covered it all with another layer of white glue. This, it helps by ironing out the little creases in the foil. And it also acts as a primer for your paint. You will never get paint to stick to foil otherwise. And before it was completely dry, I went and trimmed the edges. Now this was while the glue was still bendable so that I could poke those little edges under and have a, something nice and neat there. And I just used a one of those free coffee stirrer sticks and poked it down. This wasn't quite as neat as I wanted it. So I decided to fill the edge. I actually used gloss medium. I could have used a thick white glue just as easily. And I brushed it on. Once I'd filled that gap, I let it set for a, a few minutes, not too many, but whilst it was still soft, I wanted to remove that masking tape so I got a nice sharp edge. And the masking tape generally just peels straight off, which is just what you want. And that was a lovely edge. All I needed to do though was add some more masking tape once it was dry so I could carry on with the next stages. I flattened out the area where I wanted the wake to be. I did say this was very, very pressable still. That glue still isn't dry, and even when it is, it's a very flexible build. And I thought my waves were perhaps just a little bit too choppy, so I pushed everything down. It, it kind of, you push it down in one bit and it pops up in another. Once I'd done that, I added just white glue again across that wake area to make it a little bit smoother. I have a heated kitchen floor and this went on that and it was over the weekend. I actually did this three times. So I built up quite a thick layer of white glue and I let it dry properly in between each layer. Then it was time to paint it. Because this is still quite flexible, I used acrylics. They've got a bit of sort of stretch in them. And I started with Vallejo white primer and I airbrushed that on. Once that was dry, I went over it with my colour coats. This is Tamiya XF73. It's a green and it's a lovely sludgy green. And I did a really squiggly layer and sort of straighter bits over the wake. And those squiggles give just variety to the waves. 
Once I'd done that colour, I went over it with a second colour, but I did a couple of coats of this. And this is XF17 Sea Blue. It's actually quite green. And it's a lovely colour again. Notice it's not looking blue yet. We'll get there in a second. So I built up two more layers of squiggliness. A little bit straighter under the wake and squiggly everywhere else. And I, I wanted to make sure all the white was coloured and that this had quite a lot of depth of colouring in it before I got onto the next coat. And that was a clear, Tamiya do beautiful clear colours, it's a clear royal blue. And this added the blue colour that I wanted. Now I nicked this paint scheme unashamedly from Scalaton. It just looks so amazing on his diorama. I wanted to see how it worked and it worked amazingly. I finally went over it with a bit of clear Tamiya. I actually didn't need this because once that was on, I felt it wasn't still glossy enough. So I went over it with a little bit of gloss Mod Podge. Now this is a bit thicker than any varnish that I might be using. So I brushed it on and then used my airbrush to blow in some ripples. This is really, really effective way of just adding a little bit more detail into the waves very, very quickly. And to be honest, this diorama isn't about the waves. It's about the speedboat wake. Talking of the wake, I put gloss Mod Podge under there too. Then I went on to using some acrylic gloss medium to try and build up that wake. Now I have a love-hate relationship with this because it never dries particularly quickly and you have to put it on really thinly. So I brushed on a thin layer. So 90 minutes later, it had almost dried. So I thought, I know, I'll go over it and do the edges with a splodge coat just to see. Now, this is only very thin and it's gonna get built up a lot more than this around the boat. So I waited 18 hours and yeah, the thin bits have dried, but it isn't much thickness on the areas that haven't gone clear yet. And they will clear, but it might take months. Now these blobs are three days old. They don't look remotely clear yet. And that's the danger with gloss medium. So whilst I was thinking about that, I went and did my boat. Now this boat, it looked clear in the beginning photo, didn't it? I put it in the UV curing chamber for the whole day and forgot about it, whoops. So anyway, I sanded it off, masked out the windows because now they're a lovely biscuit color. I thought I may as well use them as the tinted windows. When I'd masked them all, I just painted it. First up with Tamiya Gray Surface Primer. This is a really great primer, it sticks to anything. But when it was dry, I felt you could see the print lines on the side of just in one or two sections. So I sanded it again before putting on the Tamiya Gloss White, which is gonna be the main color for this boat. I wanted a very clean scheme. So the bit below the masking tape is gonna be dark blue. And I made sure I didn't spray anything on the top by adding a little bit of kitchen roll over it. Now I sprayed this with a Tamiya Dark Blue. It's a gloss and I will come back in a minute and put a gloss varnish over it as well. I love it when you pull the masking tape back and there's a beautiful clean line. The windows had one or two areas where it had just come underneath, uh, but a quick scrape with an X-Acto blade got that off and a gloss varnish sealed everything really nicely. I used a silver sharpie on the handrails and added a wash around the edges of the windows. This just tidied up any little masking issues and it just gives it a nice cleaner look. I didn't really use the wash anywhere else I was going to, but I like the clean look of the boat. So ocean waves, done. Boat, done. Time for the secret weapon. I got this from Luke at Geek Gaming. You can check out his YouTube channel. He did a waterfall with it and it looked really good. It dries slightly dull, it doesn't dry really high gloss and it is not silicon. It's a hybrid polymer according to the sales spiel. I have no idea what that means, but because it's not silicon, it sticks to things differently. Um, glue will stick to it. It acts almost like an acrylic when it's dry for ease of sticking to it. But you clean it up with white spirit and you can thin it with white spirit, which is brilliant, if somewhat smelly in your house. Now you can see here the clear advantage. It's clear. This makes a huge difference. You can apply it straight from the tube and although it might take 24 hours or I actually think it takes longer to set, it's clear straight away and it skins and is semi-solid within about 30 minutes or so. So it's very easy to build up a lot of very deep layers, especially when you look at my gloss medium patch there at the bottom, that still hasn't dried. 
despite the fact I did probably seven, eight, nine, ten layers in some places, because I used this product, it was really quick and I was able to get this done in just a few days. I used a brush for this stage. It's a really old brush. It does wash out, but it's still a really old brush. And I built up the depth that I needed for the wake. There's a lot of photos around my desk I'm looking at. I've got to say, I was really impressed with this. And then I did this technique. Now, as this video seems like a shameless crib of other people off YouTube, but Real Terrain Hobbies used woodland scenic snow to make white water in resin. And the resin looked incredibly messy to deal with, but this looked much easier. So what I did was put in woodland scenic snow, get the clear fix and add some white spirit. Eventually you can stir it until you get a fluid paste. And you can make this paste anything from practically solid to incredibly runny. And it gives you a huge variety of application. So here's a semi, it's in the middle, this particular bit I'm putting on, and it builds up that white froth really well. It's easy to apply with a brush and it looks amazing. So I started with a base layer of that medium mix over everything, just to start building things up. Then I used a thicker and thicker mixes around the front and around the cross sort of wake in the middle. I did find that it looked a little bit like snow though. So I went over everything with a really, really thin mix, loads of white spirit, and that enabled a kind of frothy look. It was just stunning. And I used that same really thin mix over the front snowy looking wake to try and make it look a bit glossier. At the same time, I also started to add in more of the clear fix into the mix. So it became more translucent and glossy, which was the look I was after really. It was a lot of experimentation and just loads and loads of layers building it up. And I've got to say, I was really impressed how easy it was to use. I put in a few extra pieces of clear just to build up the backs of some of the waves before finally getting on to adding some white paint. This just adds really fine froth where I don't need the depth that the Woodland Scenic Snow gives me. I used a thin brush to add streaks where needed and a really thick old brush with really spread out bristles obviously to dab on where I wanted a more bubbly look. This combination just made my froth a little bit fine around the edges and enabled me to make the back wake the right width. It needed to be a lot wider. Um, if you look at the photos, it's very clear how the froth kind of starts off at one point and then gets wider as there's cross wakes. It's really fascinating to look at and apparently it depends on the propellers and all that kind of thing as well. Do look at a lot of photos when doing dioramas. I added a little bit of paint onto the froth just to tie everything together, especially around the front. Just zapped it that little bit more. And finally, I added some gloss medium over the top because the paint dries slightly matte, as does some of this area with the clear fix. I kept checking the photos until I thought I was done and then I took off the masking tape. So this was just a quick diorama to try out some new techniques. But here it is, on the bookshelf, finished. I really enjoyed it. If you enjoy watching videos like this, check out some of my other diorama videos, or if you want to do it yourself, try my starting scenery course.